I spent a little bit of time over there uh, Wednesday night, but uh, as we are digging into uh, the book of Daniel, and uh, this, this past Wednesday night, we got on uh, a little bit about the Antichrist, but uh, as uh, particularly the book, I think the first John points out, down through the years, there's always uh, have been around the spirit of Antichrist. Uh, and uh, you <coughs> think about that word for just a minute. Uh, Antichrist uh, against Christ. And uh, and we could uh, name a few, and we, we, we may tonight not call out a few names of uh, folks down through the years who... Uh, should have been hated. You say, well, that's a strong word. Well, God uses it. And if God has a hatred for something, uh, we ought to. Uh, hate the sin, love the sinner. Uh, but uh, as we look here at Revelation 13, it, it talks a great deal about the Antichrist, the, the fellow that's going to come uh, be a world leader. And I believe, as we talked about Wednesday night, this will be after the church has been raptured away. And uh, so anyway, let's read verses 1 through 17 of Revelation 13. It says, And I, and it's talking about uh, the John, as he sees this vision, I stood upon uh, the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns were uh, or were ten crowns, and upon his heads were the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, we'll talk a little bit about this dragon here in a little bit, the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies and power, given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy, blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And if any man have an ear, have an ear let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. And I beheld a, another beast coming out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. And this fellow here, uh, this one here, is who we usually call the false prophet. We'll get more into him here in just a minute. So he exercises all the power of the first base before him and causes the earth and them that which dwell therein to worship the first base whose deadly wound was healed. And he goeth, uh, doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of man and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in uh, do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. 
And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as should not worship the, be the image of, his, uh, of the beast should be killed. He causes all that uh, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that uh, no man could buy or sell save he had that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is six hundred three score and six or as we know it six Six, six. A lot of folks uh, messing around with that number. I don't believe they understand what in the world they're doing. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us again to be in your house, together with your people, and open our hearts up to your word tonight that we can find the things in your word, Lord, that uh, would help us grow closer to you. And, Lord, uh, thank you again for all your many blessings you send our way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, sitting around uh, the mama's room, I caught my mama doing this. I looked across the room at my brother. He's doing this. Oftentimes I find myself sit, sitting around. Uh, my brother's daughter had just moved to Georgia and they've lived in uh, Texas, Louisiana, Colorado, Nebraska, and now maybe Texas a couple of different times, and now Georgia, a little bit closer to home. And so they were in, and uh, they went to, to see Mother the other night, and uh, my two brothers were there. I wasn't, I wasn't there. My brother's son-in-law said, now, I hadn't been around Marty very much to observe, but man, y'all are alike. We were sitting at the rehab today, and uh, we got to talking about a common problem that we have, the three of us, is kidney stones, and we got to talking about the, this, that, and the other about that. And uh, Steve's wife had them. And they went to the same doctor that me and Roger use. And uh, the doctor looked at Steve, because he went to the doctor with him, and said, have we ever met? You know, I've never laid eyes on you. I've seen you somewhere before. And when I, I came in, I was the first one to go with this guy, I believe. And uh, I came in, and, he, and my brother had had surgery from him, by him. And he, he just looked at me and just shakes his head. Uh, and we're sharing a little bit about that Wednesday night. We get stuff from our parents. The Antichrist is going to get things from his daddy. Now, if this is why it, uh, I've studied about it, and you can... I'm going to lay it out there, and you can say, well, yeah, that, that sounds reasonable. You can say, no, that, I don't, don't say that. But here, here it is. We've got God the Father. We have God the Son. We have God the Holy Spirit. Satan, Satan's in, he's wanting to be in the place of God, Isaiah 14. The Antichrist copies Christ. The false prophet, which we read about starting in verse number 11, does the same work as the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit, Jesus says, is going to take of mine, give it to you, going to teach you. 
Holy Spirit wants us, urges us to worship Jesus. And I don't know if you caught that down through there from verse 11 down through verse 18. The second beast causes people to worship the first beast. So the unholy trinity, if you will. So uh, just for a minute, I want you to look back or look ahead to Revelation 17 and verse number 5. Excuse me, verse number 15. Verse number 15. Charles, it said there in verse 1 of Revelation 13 that John stood upon the, the land and he saw coming up out of the sea this beast. And a lot of folks say, well, what does that mean, the sea? And I think Revelation seventeen fifteen explains that. He said to me, the waters which thou sawest whom the whore sitteth, where the whore sitteth, are peoples. There's been, down through the ages, there's been folks trying to identify who exactly the, anti, the Antichrist is going to be. And they've, they've took a, a numbering system and signed it to letters. And, and they've done, you know, Kissinger. They got 666. They added it up. You spell out Kissinger, and each one of those letters gets a number, and you got it, you know. People got a lot of time on their hands. Hitler, somehow or another, they put numbers to all oh, Hitler's name, added up, that's him. They're gone. Kissinger died not long ago. They're gone. Where's this fellow going to come from? Well, it says here that those waters represent the people, the multitude the nations, the tongues. Where's he coming from? He could come from anywhere. But he's going to be a man unlike, a, a political leader unlike we've ever seen before. There have been others that said, uh, you know, take a look at us. We want to rule the world. Lenin from Russia, that's one of them. Out of all the terrible things he did, there were people who liked him, loved him, appreciated him. Hitler, out of all the awful things that Hitler did, there were people who loved Hitler. People still love, there's still people today that love Hitler. And you say, well, how in the world? Well, we'll, we'll get to that. Go back to Revelation chapter 1. And let's look at the first few verses there. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, my Bible has a title for this book. And uh, me and Schofield have to part ways a few times. This is one of them. The title of this book in Schofield is The Revelation of St. John the Divine. No, it ain't. Verse 1 says, The Revelation of Jesus Christ. Brother Butler, now, uh, Rusty Goodman wrote a lot of what I think is good songs. The revelation of John, to John. Hey, that's a little bit different. The revelation to John. Uh, Brother Butler absolutely despised the Rusty Goodman song, John the Revelator. Hey, it's got some good words in there, got some good meaning in there. But John ain't the Revelator. He was the one that chose, he was chosen to write down what the Revelator wanted him to. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Amen. This is written to us. His servants, things which must shortly 
come to pass. It don't mean uh, immediately. The word shortly don't. But it means rapidly. That is, when these things start coming to pass, it's going to happen pretty quickly. And as, uh, you know, we're not going tonight, we ain't got time to get through the seven seals and the seven trumpets and all that. But it's just one thing right after another that will be happening. So it's written for us to know the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel and to his servant John who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Blessed, happy, to be envied is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now, I told you I didn't agree with Schofield's title. I don't. But I don't have a timeline. But here's Schofield's timeline. You know about the year that Jesus was crucified. This is John on the Isle of Patmos because of his testimony for the Lord has been put on this isolated island. Schofield says this was written in 96 A.D. Sixty-something years after the Lord died and was raised from the dead. So John, uh, don't know how, long, how old he was when Christ, he was an apostle of Christ during Christ's earthly ministry, but 60-something years later, He's on the Isle of Patmos, prisoner, if you will, because of his testimony. Look back with me to uh, chapter 13. Let's read verses 2 through 10 again. He says in verse 2, And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. Now, this coincides, goes hand in hand with what we have been studying in the book of Daniel. So there was a leopard, his feet, were, at, were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon, the dragon gave him his power. You say, well, who in the world is this dragon? Well, mine, I have to flip a page back. If you'll look back for just a minute, we'll come back to chapter, chapter 13, chapter 12 and verse 3. It tells us exactly who this dragon is. Revelation 12 and verse 3 says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns upon his head, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to deliver her child as soon as it was born. So who is this dragon? Look down to verse 9 of Revelation 12. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And if you caught that, about a third of the angels went with him. So if you look back with me to chapter 13, so the Antichrist power comes from his daddy, Satan himself. Uh, they tell me to be cautious in the upcoming year about 
what we see political candidates saying on TV. Is it them? Or is it what we've become known as AI? Now, some of y'all got some pictures of me. I done ventured over to Dub's Burgers a couple times, and I, I told, I've been telling y'all Dub's Burgers and make your hair shine. And I doctored up a picture of me. My hair is all black. I got a beautiful smile on my face, and my eyes didn't look baggy no more. And then I went back the other day, me and Daddy did, and I ate two Dub's cheeseburgers. And, hey, my hair grew long and black. I even had a full beard, a black beard after all that. And then the, I know the first one, they said, was that really? Yeah, that was me. It just got doctored up. But this AI stuff, they can take a picture of me, take a picture of you, take a picture of anybody, and have us say whatever. It really won't be us saying it, but it sure does look like that's what we're doing. And it'd be somebody somewhere in some office somewhere sounding and looking just like us. So, how's this apply to this? Well, it just makes me see just a little bit more plainly how some of these things can take place. So uh, he got his power from the beast. Verse 3 says, I saw one of the heads as it were wounded to death. Uh, He's going to die. You remember Christ died in Rhodes? He's going to try to imitate everything that Christ is and has done, is doing. And so he's going to put, be put there. Some people think, well, it's just going to be like he was dead. Well, my Bible says that he wounded to death. And then that deadly wound was healed. Oh, then there's going to be even more people following down that trail. Verse 4. They worship the dragon which gave power to the beast. Christ gets us to worship our Heavenly Father. And we didn't say it about the false prophet making people worship the Antichrist. Daniel chapter 7 goes hand in hand with this. Uh, I was sitting there in Mother's room the other day telling Roger about all this stuff. What we do that's not only look similar, but actions are similar. And I looked across the room to Daddy. He had stretched out his legs and was just moving his foot up and down. And then I looked back at Roger. His legs are straightened out. Same foot, I believe. Uh, and I said, take that for example. Take that, for example. We're just like him. Same action, same mannerism, same a lot of things. So is the Antichrist. Just like his father, Satan himself. Turn over with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8. And nine, we talk about this from time to time. I think maybe we even read some of it uh, Wednesday night. So this is a, a time in the life, in the future, when the church will be taken out and the Holy Spirit's job is going to change. Like some commentators say, it's going to be back to what the Holy Spirit's job was in the Old Testament days. But uh, verse 8, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And then shall that wicked, the Antichrist, be revealed, 
whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Who gives him his power? Satan gives him his power. I'm just going to throw this out again. Election year coming up. Don't be overwhelmed by somebody's ability to give us good speech. Don't be overwhelmed by somebody that... Uh, now, I've heard this. People vote for somebody that's dress is nice. That's handsome or it's beautiful. Oh, they look better than that other one. That's, 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 that's look. What do, what do they stand for? Does their actions back up what their speech says? And certainly this Antichrist, oh, he's going to be a wonderful speech maker. But who's backing him up? Satan himself let's look back to Revelation 13 verse number 6 or verse 5 and there was given to him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and power was given to him to continue 42 months 3 and a half years and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven Verse 7, it was given uh, to him power to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power is given to him all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And he says, if you got an ear, hear this. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. Then he leads in to this other beast who's going to say, you need to worship him. Bow down and worship him. And as we've been going through the book of Daniel on Wednesday nights, you remember, oh, you didn't do, you didn't worship? Well, we're going to throw you into the fiery furnace. Oh, you didn't bow down and worship? We're going to throw you into the den of lions. You didn't, you weren't able to give me the interpretation of my dream. We're going to kill you. Very real. Now, uh, at this day, most, most of us know this. You go to the store. Where's that mark at? Mm. Now, no, you, no, you can't buy. Mm -mm. Go trade car. Oh, where, where's that mark at? Mm, no, no. I mean, was reading this to me on Facebook that uh, folks got locked out of the movie theater last night in the cold. Wouldn't allow them to sit in the lobby, wait. They had to go outside, get in the cold, and then call for somebody to come pick them up because they couldn't see this particular movie. Now, they didn't ask for no mark, but in similar fashion. You say, well, where are you getting all that? Well, just uh, look down to verse 17. No man can buy or sell unless that mark's there. Will there be people being saved during this day? Yeah. Yes. But we didn't read it while we was over there, but I'm a firm believer in this. Those who have rejected the gospel now, will be following this guy then. 
if they've survived that long. Oh, give me that mark if I, if I, I can buy a loaf of bread with that mark. Yeah. Yeah. I can buy a steak if I just have that mark. Yeah, tattoo me up. He is really great, ain't he? And that's going to be the talk of the day. Where does his power come from? His power comes from Satan himself. Now look back to Revelation 13, verse, verse 14. Fell in the earth by the means of uh, those miracles which he had power to do. You say, well, people have power to do miracles? Uh Read book of Exodus sometime. Not 100% of them, but almost everything that Moses went and did before Pharaoh to let the, for him to let the Israelites go, Pharaoh's guys could do. Moses' rod, he threw it down, it turned into a snake. They came in, hey, they threw some stuff down and turned into a snake. So don't be surprised at this. Don't be surprised at the power of Satan. But just know this. Our God has more. Our God has more. He says to them, verse 14, to them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. He had power to give life to the image of the beast. How's that? Well, we talked about AI a while ago, artificial intelligence. Is that thing really talking or is it just look that way? Went to Opry Land. Some of y'all went to Opry Land. They made water flow uphill. I still ain't figured that out. But there it went, flowing uphill. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. One thing that we need to be getting out to folks is this. Know Jesus. Know Jesus. There are folks down through the years who said, well, uh, I don't really believe in the rapture, but when the rapture takes place, if it takes place, then I'll believe. They're walking on some dangerous ground. Because my Bible reads that those that reject the gospel will be sent a strong delusion that they believe this lie from this fellow. Know Jesus today. One last place we'll turn is Isaiah chapter 55, and then we'll close. Isaiah 55, and then we'll close. One of the great evangelists of North Alabama, in North Alabama, Brother Junior Hill, passed away recently, this past week. And uh, Amy and I had the privilege of hearing him preach in Atlanta at the Southern Baptist Convention back in 1996, I believe, 96, I believe it was. And then later on, uh, we heard that he was going to be at First Baptist Month of Shows, and we went over there. He preached the same sermon. You know, Tried to emulate him, copy him just a little bit. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. If there is an in season, then there has to be an out of season. But Isaiah 55 and verse 6, he didn't use that scripture that night. Seek ye the Lord. Wow. Wow. He may be found. Barring from Junior, Brother Junior Hill. 
if there's a time when he may be found, then there's got to be a time when he can't be. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. A friend of mine I used to work with uh, heard this story. and uh, So he and I, we, we didn't go interview anybody, but knowing what we know, knowing who we know, this is a scenario that we believe happened. This fellow went to revival meeting and was telling that uh, he'll never go back to another such meeting again. My friend and I got together, knowing who we know, knowing what we know, this is the scenario we came up with. The Lord was dealing with him. Holy Spirit doesn't got to hold that fella. He didn't know what to do with it. I pray that he's had that opportunity again. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are tonight. Lord, uh, as we read in your word that uh, these things were written for us, your servants, that we might know the things that are going to be. And oh, what an awful time this is going to be. And we see signs around us, Lord, that's pointing to that uh, the world's right for such a fellow to come in. I pray that tonight, Lord, anybody listening to me or listening to this broadcast later on that don't know Jesus Christ, that they come to know him before it's everlasting too late. Know Jesus. Not, not knowing the Antichrist, but knowing who Jesus is and accepting him as their personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for doing these things. Bring revival to our land. Let it start right here with us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand.